What's up everyone? Welcome again to Overhead Recipes. This week we're gonna talk about the art and science of not wasting milk whenever you are making your favorite latte or cappuccinos through the use of math. And just like other videos, all I really want is to share some secret tips and practical applications for you to waste less money whenever you're making your coffee, whether you run a business or just doing it from home. And before we proceed, I would really appreciate it if you guys can give the video a like and subscribe to the channel because I found out that over 98% of the views we have on the channel so far are not subscribed. So again, thank you very much for that little quick effort of hitting the like button. So obviously, in order for us to measure our milk accurately every single time, we'll have to rely on some mats. To do all this right and you might be thinking wait hold up hold up Dave you know we don't want to do math every single time we're gonna make a latte or a coffee we don't have time for that don't worry too much um, really you have to only do it once or twice and after a while you get the hang of it all right let's get it started so the number one most important thing for you to know is your mug and cup size. You don't have to know every single mug and cup size out in the market, just the ones that you use most often. In my case, it's this IKEA cup and saucer set, and it can, you can see in the product description, it actually shows 26 centiliters in volume. In case you don't know, that equates to 260 mils, which is the maximum amount of liquid you can put in the cup. In case you're not so sure about your cup, maybe you bought it somewhere that doesn't have a printed volume, you just put your cup in a scale, tear it, and then pour some water in it until you fill it to the brim. And don't do it like I did that you end up spilling water all over the scale. So just fill it up all the way to the brim and get an approximate volume for the cup. And do the same with your smaller cups that you might be using pretty frequently. In my case, I use this big IKEA cup for our daily double shot lattes or cappuccinos and sometimes we use this single smaller cup that we use for single shots. Maybe we're going to have it towards the end of the night or we just want to have single shots. And with this mug, it comes up to approximately 190 ml when you fill it up to the brim so for me those are the only two cups i have to worry about i really don't have to deal with any other cup so there's really not a lot of complications i have to deal with now let's go make some coffee now for this recipe i use my standard 17 grams of input that yields around 36 grams of or 36 mils of output of coffee now remember that we already know the total volume that we can put inside our mugs, right? So with this in mind, after we extract our 36 ml of coffee, we should be able to calculate how much milk that we can put in. So now remember that our total mug volume is 260 ml and the coffee volume is 36. You would assume that the remaining capacity is the simple difference of the two, which is 224 ml. Does that really mean that we can put simply put 224 ml of milk in to the jug and start frothing? No, it is not that easy. Because remember that we always have to froth our milk. We have to expand our milk roughly by 20% for latte, 25% to 30% for cappuccino. And with that in mind, we have to adjust our calculations. Our remaining volume in the mug after the coffee is 224 and assuming the latte expansion is 20%, we're looking at just shy of 180 ml of max milk that we can put inside the milk jug so that we don't spill or waste a lot of milk. So let's see how this works. So now here's the difference. As you can see, our milk level is actually way below the usual below the spout recommendation when it comes to filling the, the milk. Our spot is where, where the blue line is and after frothing, you can see that with the expansion of the milk, we actually have filled the jug quite well. And as you can see, if I pour this milk out, and I'm sorry if the latte R is not very good, I'm standing like perpendicular to the jug. As you can see, as I empty the, the milk jug, as I pour my, my milk out, whether it's a latte art or not, I actually don't have a lot of milk wastage. You can see from the total remaining milk, I probably have less than one tablespoon of milk going in there, which is perfect because honestly, you know, if you're gonna pour on a mug and not on a takeout, you probably need a little bit of excess milk anyway. So that's a quick video I have for you guys for this week. I hope you guys would 
like the video if you find it useful and make your coffee making experience a lot better um, I think nobody really likes to waste milk or, or you know run short whenever you're pouring milk whether you're doing it at home or doing it as a business so li these little skills are really quite in, um, quite useful for you to experiment on an everyday basis and make better latte as a, as a result so again if you like this video please give this video a like and give the channel a good click on the subscribe button again thank you so much for being here until next time thank you for watching like comment and subscribe and i'll see you again next week ciao